Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game. So this is a game that I played recently against Terminator Hank, who at the time of this game was something like number nine in the world, and uh, I think I was like five or six. So this is a very strong player, and I've been trying to practice shadow a bit more. I feel like I often prefer to play free people, so I'm trying to build up my shadow skills. I gave my opponent two action tokens because I think that balances the base game a little bit more, and if you're going to request shadow, then I think it's nice to at least give your opponent some action tokens. So I allocated one eye, and I rolled two musters, two palantirs, and a character die, and you can see that I started with palantir of Orthanc in hand. So if I could potentially get Saruman turn one, I could play this character die and get to draw some extra Palantirs uh, cards right away. That'd be really fun. And my opponent gets this really nice roll, which potentially lets them get Aragorn turn one. And they have House of Stewards in hand. And so I don't know what they have while we're playing, but obviously I think to myself, well, there's a chance that they're not going to try and move the Fellowship this turn. They're just going to get, um, get Aragorn. And if they do that, then it's okay for me to get Saruman in play turn one a little earlier in the turn because otherwise, if you do that and, and they lose Gandalf, then you end up giving them Gandalf turn one, which is tricky, So, which is not good for Shadow. So basically, I have to wait and see, are they going to try and get Aragorn, in which case I can get Saruman early, or are they just going to move the Fellowship, in which case I have to wait until the end of the round to get Saruman. So... If it were me, I would be very tempted to try and get Aragorn turn one, particularly with House of Stewards in play. It gives you a bunch of good strategy card drawing, and you can defend Gondor pretty well with Boromir. I'd bring Boromir down. And it can get it can get Gondor to war early using Boromir's ability. So, Okay, so what does my opponent do? They start by uh, passing, which I think makes a lot of sense. And then, of course, I muster Isengard. And then they draw a card here. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And this is one of the small ways that action tokens help the free people because they don't actually have a playable card right now for Gandalf. And by drawing a character card, which I think is what they're going to do, there are actually five character cards in the deck that could let them get Aragorn turn one without spending a ring. Right now, given their hand, they would have to spend a ring with on this Palantir, an elven ring on this Palantir, to be able to move, uh, separate, and then move companions twice and then crown Aragorn. But if they get any of the four cards that separate companions from the Fellowship, there and back again, I will go alone, Gua here, or We Prove the Swifter, any of those four, or Dead Men of Dunharrow, then they can get Aragorn turn one without spending a ring. The way you do that with Dead Men of Dunharrow is you separate to Moria, and then you move a second time using your second character die to Eastamnet, and then you use the Palantir to teleport into Pelargir. From Eastamnet to Pelargir, you get three regulars in Pelargir, and then you can crown Aragorn in Pelargir, which normally might be a little dangerous, but or this early on in the game, it's at no risk. So, And actually, it's perfectly nice to get three musters out of it. So, or three half musters. So anyway, they draw a character card, but they don't get one of those five. They get Elven Cloaks. At least it's playable. So that's good for them. And now I really don't know what they're going to do. I have to at least temporize a little bit and wait and see if they're going to try and go for Aragorn or not. If they go for Aragorn, I could get, I would be tempted to get Saruman on my next die and then use uh, Palantir of Orthanc early on. All right, but... They just play Elven Cloaks. So it's very unlikely at this point they're going for Aragorn. I know that they are going to just move the Fellowship. And, you know, I have to wait on Saruman. So they get Eagles are coming. Nothing special. If they had gotten We Prove the Swifter, it's possible to crown Aragorn turn one with only three dice. So you separate to Moria and then you play We Prove the Swifter from Moria all the way to Minas Tirith. Because that's Dimril Dale, Parth Celebrant, East of Net, Druid and Forest, and Minas Tirith. You can get there with only a single action die from Moria to Minas Tirith with We Prove the Swifter. Um, but they didn't redraw We Prove the Swifter, and it seems like they're not trying to get Aragorn anyway. So I'm anticipating they're going to move, and therefore I just draw a strategy card because there's nothing else really that I can play. I mean, maybe play Monsters Rouse, but it felt a little too early to me. I draw many kings to the service of Mordor, which I'm happy to see. This is a good early mustering card, I think. Um, 
you know, my intuition is that's, that's pretty good. I can put some in North Rune and South Rune, and then I'll have a full stack of 10 coming up to battle due. All right, so they move once and I miss, and then I play my card. I could have drawn again. I could have drawn a second card, but I feel like this is a perfectly fine mustering card. I'm happy to play it. I'll draw more cards next time. I'm going to be having potentially a whole bunch of cards because of Palantir, so I'm not in a rush to fill my hand full of cards. All right. I know I'm going to get Saruman, or at least I feel like there's a chance I'm going to get Saruman. They move again, and now they get hit. And at this point, they're kind of hoping to lose Gandalf because that will stall my ability to get Saruman. So I get a zero reveal. But if I had hit them and gotten any tile that does damage, I think it's very likely they would lose Gandalf. At which point I have a choice between getting Saruman turn one and letting them get Gandalf turn one or just delaying Saruman. And obviously I would not have let them get Gandalf turn one, even though I would get Saruman. It's not worth it because I have a very good chance of rolling a muster next round to get Saruman. They have a very, um, only like a 50-50 chance of rolling Will of the West to get Gandalf. And even if they do, I can get Saruman at the end of the turn and delay them. So, um... I wouldn't, it, it would just, it, this is, this would have been a way of stalling Saruman. I would have stalled, I would have stalled Saruman, but I hit them and get a zero reveal, which is nice for me. Uh, that's the best outcome I could hope for. And, um, then I get to get Saruman. So I get Saruman and then they hide, which is, makes sense. And let's see, they get Mirror of Galadriel, Power of Tom Bombadil. Fine. Nothing particularly special there. And I get Okay, cards, Ulug High can be useful to reinforce a siege sometime, and Flocks of Corbane, which I don't intend to play for the card effect, even though they're going around Moria. I don't know if I roll a bunch of Palantirs, maybe, but I don't roll any Palantirs, and I roll three eyes. My opponent gets another great roll, so they're going to be able to get Gandalf turn two, which is always nice, and they're going to be able to keep making progress with the Fellowship. I get a hit, and I don't Oh, sorry. They didn't, my, my mistake. They hadn't lost Gandalf. Now I hit them and they get a three. So that's perfect. They are going, now they're going to be able to get, there were two things that had to happen there. Um, so they, uh, they lose Gandalf, don't get revealed into Moria and, um, they're going to get Gandalf turn, turn two. So that's nice for them. I go ahead and hop an orc onto the, um, fellowship, which I think is, you know, it's a, a little bit of time, but probably, probably worth it. I'm not, I'm not so sure. I'm curious. Would, would you do this here? I don't want them getting through Moria entirely without taking more damage. And the value of this extra, um, unit on here is reasonably high because if they move again, I get a reroll. I don't know exactly how much extra corruption this does. It would be interesting to calculate that, but I may do it in the comments later. All right, so um, my opponent passes, and then I get uh, Sauron to war, and then they go ahead and get Gandalf, because that's obviously what they're going to be doing with that die, and it doesn't reveal any information. And then I decide, all right, I'm going to go try and take out the elves. I have some good units in South Rune and North Rune. I should be able to battle do. I'm going to send this army in Daggerlad all the way up to, or Mornon all the way up to um, the north, and then I will reinforce Dol Guldur into into Dimrald Dale and take Lorien. That's my that's my plan. And then hopefully at some point I'll draw into Corsairs of Umbar, and that'll be my ten points. It'll be Dew, which are which is Dale, Erebor, and Woodland Realm. That's five. Lorien is two more. Uh, Dol Amroth is two more, and then either Pelargi or Edoras or maybe the Shire. And that'll be my ten. That's my plan. So we'll see if it works. All right, they go ahead and play Power of Tom Bombadil, which is fine. I. I don't know. Would it be worth drawing a card here instead? Um, and the other thing, the other thing about this is, like, if you had gone with Aragorn on turn one, you would have been rolling five dice already. And then cards like this, you could, you would have the dice to really get the North to war in advance of this attack, potentially. I mean, you didn't know you were going to draw Power of Tom Bombadil. There are a bunch of things, but like. I just think getting the early Aragorn, it definitely slows down the fellowship. Like that was a real cost, but it just, it increases your defense quite a lot also. So, um, okay. Anyway, they muster the North towards war a little bit. And now I'm like, okay, now my plan is I'm going to get the North to war 
And that's how I'm going to get the Witch King. I'll make sure I take out Carrick and Dale. And then eventually I'll take out the elves also. So um, that just changes my ordering slightly. They use a character die here to move from Fords of Eisen all the way back to Helm's Deep. I am surprised by that. I mean, I guess the Fellowship is making pretty good progress. They don't want to move again and get caught through Moria. Okay. Um... And I guess it makes sense to move these units into Helm's Deep. It it definitely makes going towards Fords of Eisen tempting for me because now it's it's only a half movement. I am worried about Ents, so that's something to consider. And um, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's worth taking the move anyway now. I don't know. That's that's an interesting that's an interesting choice. I probably would have pushed the Fellowship a little bit more um here but it is nicer it's much nicer to be able to move at the start of next round when i probably will have fewer than three eyes when i'll only be hitting on sixes so i can understand why you might want to wait okay i go ahead and play the palantir of orthanc here obviously you know it's maybe this is a mistake i didn't i didn't really need to play it here um i guess my thinking was I will potentially roll a Palantir next round and then Shadow, I mean, the free people will have a really difficult choice, even if they roll the Will of the West, a difficult choice between getting rid of the Palantir of Orthanc or moving immediately with the Fellowship. Like when you're sitting at one movement away from Moria, um, there are a lot of tiles in the, or a lot of cards in the, shadow deck in the character deck for shadow they can reveal the fellowship mess with the fellowship draw an extra hunt tile get revealed into moria so you have a strong incentive as free people at the start of round three to move um and so i feel like it's a little bit of a like a fork where they're going to have to choose between getting rid of the palantir or moving and so i feel like there's a chance that i'm gonna get to at least draw one card off of this plus plus at some point get a ring or or waste their will of the west so, um, so that's why I do it there. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I should have just moved these armies north, waiting until I actually have a Palantir and can do something useful for it. Uh, that was my thinking. Curious to know your thoughts on that. Would you have played, would you have played Palantir of Orthanc there? Um, or would you have, would you have moved, get this, keep this army moving north? Because if I don't roll too many attacks next round, there's a chance I won't even get the north to war and won't even be able to get Witch King round three. So maybe it would have been better to move north more. Okay. Um, so I guess, by the way, my, my thinking was I'm probably going to get at least two armies next round, two army movements, and therefore I can um, move twice with this army, No Man Land, into Southern Rovanian, Northern Rovanian, and then simultaneously move Dol Golder into Dimrel Dale with those other two half movements, and that'll be set up to sort of make my attack. So that's why that's why I decided another reason that led me sort of slightly towards Palantir War Think. Okay. Um I'm just gonna make a note. Okay. So I draw Day Without Dawn and Grand and allocate one eye. My opponent gets Kindred of Gorfindel and they now have an Ent. And I allocate one eye and I get this nice roll. This is just a beautiful roll. Six attacks, three musters, like can't really ask for anything else there except for maybe a palantir uh i didn't i didn't actually roll a palantir and therefore i'm not really threatening to do anything with the palantir of orthanc um so if my opponent doesn't roll a will of the west it won't really hurt them so they didn't roll a will of the west but i didn't roll a palantir so no reason for them to get rid of the palantir now and give me a ring for it i, I wouldn't think Hope, hopefully they'll roll a will of the west next time so um so they go ahead and move that was their whole plan, and um, I get lucky and hit them. That orc, that one orc, uh, Holland on, in Holland hit them, and um, I get an eye, which is obviously a great tile for me to draw. Um, it reveals them, and um, you know I haven't played any of the tile drawing cards yet, so getting getting more eyes out of the pool means that the tile drawing cards later will be more useful. So I'm happy to happy to see this, and they can't reasonably I, I mean i don't think they will i think they're just going to take the corruption yeah so they take the corruption and then they go through and they get a one so they take another one corruption which i think makes sense um you know that one was pretty average 
there were three or four zeros, the eyes and a zero. There were three ones and then five tiles that would have been worse than the one reveal. Um, one reveal is obviously better than one not reveal because, um, you know, they're, they're now getting sort of two reveals for one. But it's kind of lucky that I hit them on, on uh, three dice with a six. I don't know what those chances are, like maybe 30%. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Uh, okay, so they get revealed there. That's obviously nice for me, but they do have Strider's Guide, so these musters can be put to good use, um, and they can uh, hide. Now, one thing to consider, with this many musters, it would be possible to, say, get the North to war, particularly with this, um, with this, with this muster token. So I don't know if they want to use their other token right away, but if they muster once... With this, and they muster again. Oh, right. They're not, the North isn't active yet, right? Power of Tom Bombadil doesn't activate them. Yeah, okay. So they wouldn't be able to get the North to war. They could get, um, they could get elves to war and then still have one extra muster die left over. So is that worth it to buff up, um, Woodland Realm and get the elves to war? Probably, probably not, um, given what they have in their hand. So, um, Okay, so I go ahead and get my armies moving exactly as planned with my army dice, and then they pass, and I get my armies in position, and then they move this regular into Old Forest Road, and I guess that makes sense. I mean, I have these, it's not really costing me any actions, because I have these um, character dice, um, and I guess they want to get they want to get into position for Western Net, so it's not crazy to spend that. Um, it does make it a little easier for me to get the the north to war um uh, it doesn't make a difference because it for purposes of getting the north to war because i could go into old i could move into old forest road and then i would have a choice between either attacking carrick or attacking dale um i would probably end up attacking woodland realm and then dale and then they could muster up in Carrick. And so they have this one extra regular that would end up in Carrick instead of being killed in Old Forest Road. Um, but it does make me wonder if they have scouts or something like that. So, But either way, I have to I have to do it. If that one regular gets into Woodland Realm, then so be it. Um, I attack and... Um, and they don't play a card. And that surprises me because this Kindred of Glorfindel, advantageous position in this situation could definitely increase your chances of that unit surviving. As it turns out, I rolled really badly and didn't roll any five or sixes on seven dice. And so that unit gets into Woodland Realm and neither of us played cards. So I guess in this case, it was it turned out well for them. But I'm surprised that, that they didn't play Kindred of Glorfindel to try and help that unit survive. Um, okay. In any case, they... Um, they go ahead and hide the fellowship using Strider's ability. And then I attack into Dale, which is a little risky um, in that maybe this unit is going to get into um, get into Woodland Realm or get into Erebor. But I need to take care of the North. Um, if I don't deal with the North this round, then they can use the action token at the end of the round and then muster an elite into Dale at the start of next round. And if I don't deal with Dale, then they can just muster, muster, muster. So I, I absolutely have to deal with this. And I guess this is the benefit of power of Tom Bombadil. So I, I see sort of the, the ripple effects of that. Um, I definitely have to deal with Dale now. So I attack into Dale. That's going to put the North to war. I'm going to be able to muster the Witch King turn three, which I feel good about. And um, they play heroic death here. I think it makes sense because you you know it increases your chances of this regular surviving, um, and that'd be nice. As it turns out, I roll two sixes on seven dice. You know I don't know exactly what the odds are, but the fact that these these guys die and the guy in Old Forest Road survives, who knows? Um, but all right, so. Um, they do one hit back to me, and then I take over Dale with a single unit because I want to be prepared to take over Carrick. Um, I feel like it's likely they're going to muster into there. I feel like if they had scouts at this point, they probably would have already played it. So um, 
I'm just going to I'm just going to take over Carrick. If they end up with a regular that survives that muster, then so be it. They can potentially get into Woodland Realm, but I just I need to take care of the north and then put Woodland Woodland Realm under siege and then eventually I can take out that stronghold. So that's that's my plan. Um they muster into Carrick and then I, I get the Witch King first because there's there's no rush on this. I might as well get two extra leadership and get to cycle some combat cards. Um and then uh they move the fellowship again. Um, this is the second time this turn, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have four dice and hit them on five. So I definitely have a good chance of hitting them here. Um, and I do. I get two hits, and it's an eye. And then they take a. I think they take. Yeah. Okay. So they just take two corruption here, which makes sense because you're revealed. You still have Strider's guide. You don't want to risk the chances of losing Strider. Um, and then I attack Carrick here, and I play. They're terrible here, um, and and then they saved Kindred of Glorfindel for this moment. So so maybe they foresaw all of this. That's it's quite possible. I mean, they're a very strong player, so they could have they could have easily foreseen the fact that I was going to attack Dale, and then I was going to and they were going to muster into Carrick, and then I was going to have to attack Carrick, and that's why they saved the advantageous position for this moment because now you have two hit points that you're potentially protecting. Um, instead of just the one in Old Forest Road. So cool. That's really cool if they did that. Um, really advanced play. Uh, as it turns out, I um, I miss entirely on my combat roll, but then I get two hits on my leader reroll, and um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you know, I, I think plays like this, right? You're playing you're playing to your odds. You you can't. You have to make decisions based on the probabilities and not based on the outcome of what happened. Like this was a good play to play an advantageous position, even though it didn't work. Um, I play Flocks of Corbane to cycle it because I want a better character card. So I get Falthing from the Deep, which is kind of tempting because um, there's still a couple reveals in here and there are quite a few um, single one tiles and striders in the uh, fellowship right now. So like that, that's tempting. That's exciting to, to maybe play that. And I have Palantir of Orthanc in play. So I'm happy to play cards if I, if I have um, cards. So they top deck um, Thrandall's Archers. Obviously that's great for them. Um, and... I allocate one eye, roll one more. I still don't roll any Palantirs. So Palantir Vorthank has done nothing for me so far. Um, and they roll a bunch of movement. So obviously, um, you know, that's kind of a good situation for them. They hide the fellowship right away. I think it makes total sense to use a character die. You're not even using Strider's ability, but um, you have more than enough character movement this round and you want to save that Palantir to be able to um, play Thrandall's Archers. So... Um, I go ahead and move armies and I start by just getting uh, this army onto the fellowship because I have two eyes. I ha I'm going to have two, two rerolls. So I'm making decent progress uh, against the fellowship, drawing hunt tiles. I'm not doing like tons of corruption, but I am sort of pulling some tiles out. So I want to keep the pressure on and that extra half movement. Uh, how much does it cost? My anticipation is the fellowship is going to move away. And then I'll be able to use this army to besiege Lorien. I'm a little scared of um, pa new powers rising, but I have Day Without Dawn or Ulukai to spend on it. Um, so that's my that's my plan. Okay, so I go ahead. They pass. Makes sense. I muster uh, the South Rounds and Easterlings to war, and then they move the Fellowship once. I'm not sure why they passed and then moved the Fellowship here, but maybe they realized I could there was something I could do. Maybe I should have played um, Foul Thing from the Deep right away. Um, you know, they had enough movement that I just felt like it wasn't going to do that much. Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe that was a mistake. Maybe, maybe what I should have done there instead of just mustering. I, if I was going to play Foul Thing, maybe that was the right moment to play Foul Thing before they had moved it all. Um so yeah, anyway, I didn't do that and, uh, they moved and then I, uh, missed them. So, you know, I had four sixes that time and miss. Okay. Uh, certainly the hunt overall has been going pretty well for me. Um, and then I get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war because I have all these units. I need to be able to use them. Then they play Thrandall's Archers, which makes sense. And they draw into Book of Mazarble, not the most useful card, um, at this point in the game, but you know, they could, it's not crazy that they could separate somebody up there 
if they if they have a bunch of movement. Um, so I play foul thing here, and I get a two. So that is nice to have not drawn an eye. That's a pretty average tile. Um, on foul thing, you prefer a low a low tile because they have to take a random casualty anyway. So actually, like a one would have been better than a two in this case. Um, but that's that's a pretty average tile. Um, I'm happy. I'm fine with that result. And they don't get revealed, and then they lose a random companion because they have to. And they uh, I we get Pippin, and Pippin goes to Lorian. So I think that makes sense. Um, you know, they could have gone to uh, Westamnet, and I like the idea of having a have a leader there so that if at some point you get into a situation where you don't have an army movement die, you can um, use a, a character die if you have to, to move from Westamnet into Helm's Deep at the moment when um, Helm, uh, Helm's Deep is getting attacked by Orthanc. <laughs> and... Um, it turns on it turns on Riders of Theoden. So Riders of Theoden is the only muster card that lets you muster in the Siege of Helm's Deep, and it requires a companion. So it's you usually don't get to play it that way. Um, but if you have a Hobbit in the battle, um, you could play Riders of Theoden even after Helm's Deep comes under siege. So I might have been tempted to go to Westham Net. Okay, so. Uh, but I understand why you go to Lorien. Certainly Lorien is getting attacked at some point during this game. So that makes sense too. And then if I have something like Grand, which I do actually, then you can play a, um, combat card on the first round of combat. So there's certainly benefits of being in Lorien as well. Okay. Um, I go ahead and attack Woodland Rome here. It goes under siege and, um, you know, this is probably not enough. If they hadn't drawn Thrandall's archers, then I could have defeated four hit points probably with um, with this army. But now that they got that extra elite from Thrandall's archers into Woodland Realm, I'm probably I feel like I'm going to have to get reinforcements for this army. And so now my plan is get the Eastern and Northern army over to um, Dale and Woodland Realm, reinforce it, and then um, basically uh, take that out. And then with any leftovers, take out Erebor. So that's that's my plan. Um, okay. And I'm delaying moving this army out, out of Parth Celebrant because um, I want to maintain my rerolls uh, against the Fellowship. So um, I have, I'm hitting on fives now, and then I miss again. I had four dice and to hit on a five, and I miss. So I don't know exactly how many hunts I should have been hitting on. I mean, there were some early hunts that I got lucky on. I think this is certainly, I have, it's in my favor, um, well more than 50% to hit on, on this hunt and I miss. So, you know, the hunt balances out. I think you try and try and maintain, uh, uh, an equilibrium if you can. Uh, there are certainly swings in this game and I, and I enjoy that. I mean, I think that's, I think that's part of the game. So, um, obviously I've been trying to hunt the fellowship and that time I had a good start, but now these two moves missed. Okay, and now I have a kind of a tricky decision. Do I want to move off of the Fellowship in Parth Celebrant, um, or do I want to, because I kind of want to attack Lorien before they draw um, Power Too Great, um, or or um, Celeborn's Galadrim, both of those, um, or do I want to sort of, basically, I, I want to get this army from Parth Celebrant into Lorien, but I don't want to do it yet. My plan was to sort of take out the elves, but I can't quite do it yet. So um, instead, I just use an army movement to get going on on these armies. So my Southrons and Easterlings are at war. I now have them piled up in East Rune, and I have them piled up in West Herondor. If I need to move them back to Umbar, if I draw um, Corsairs of Umbar, then great, so be it. But, um, you know, statistically, I'm less likely to draw it. I'm, I'm not that likely to draw it. Um, in the next, you know, two or three rounds. And I'd rather threaten three attacks and get into Dol Amroth if they, um, you know, don't have musters on a particular round. So, um, and before the elves are at war, right? Then they can't even play Cairdon's ships. The only card that helps them is Imrahil of Dol Amroth. So, and I think what else are they going to do with that character die, right? Like maybe they have a character card to play, which they could use with that character die. But 
maybe not, in which case um, they're probably going to feel compelled to move, in which case I'll be very happy to get those two extra rerolls. As it turns out, I didn't need them. I got two hits right off the bat, and they did move. I got two hits. I drew an eye, so this is a two and reveal. And um, I don't know that they would have declared into Minas Tirith um, had they not been revealed at the start of next turn, but um, I, I think they probably would have just kept moving. The Fellowship, even though it's relatively high in corruption, the Fellowship is still mostly doing okay um, in terms of corruption. Um, and I did get an eye. So, um, you know, that means on one hand at this point, I like, I'm happy to be doing two damage with this and revealing them. But on the other hand, um, I'm not actually thinning out the hunt pool that much. Um, there's still going to be these zeros and ones in there, which will be perfectly pleasant later on. So it's sort of a double-edged sword. At this point, I probably would have re preferred this two, this tile that does two reveal or this tile that does one reveal. Um, or even a three or something like that, um, than an eye, but it's hard to say. I, I'm happy to get the reveal. I'm happy to do two damage. So, and then random, they take a random companion and they lose strider, which is obviously huge for me. That, that is great. Um, that significantly decreases the chances that they will be able to, um, make it next round. Um, they, well, I don't know, maybe not significantly. They're going to have to hide, move, move. So they're going to have to have three three movements um, to be able to do it. And, you know, they have decent chances of rolling three movement, but um, and possibly a fourth movement if they if they get hit on the if they get revealed on the on the first move. So they're going to need three or four movement to make it in. All right. So but obviously this is a great great turn of events for me. And this is a little bit like the the domino effect of playing foul thing from the deep. The fact that like I had a chance to get Strider on Foul Thing from the deep, low chances, missed there. But now I have a second chance to get them when they take a random companion here. Um, so, and I think when you start to get up to, like the other option was to take two corruption, be at seven corruption. I think that starts to get pretty dangerous um, to go in with that big of a fellowship into Mordor with corruption that high when Isildur's Bane is still... Um, has not been played and Candles of Corpses has not been played. So um, you don't want to get too high on corruption. So I think it was the right choice to, to lose Strider there. Um, and now finally, now that the Fellowship is no longer in um, in Parth Celebron, I attack Lorien. And I'm happy to get Lorien under siege while um, before new power, uh, before power too great is played. Okay. Um, so I'm happy to see Day Without Dawn. If they roll a bunch of Wills of the West, uh, I can potentially stall them from getting into Mordor. And um, they draw Immerhill of Dol Amroth. And let's see what they end up discarding. We talk about Strider a little bit. And um, they, they show I will go alone and get rid of that. I don't know exactly. Maybe, maybe they were planning on... That might have just been a mistake, a misclick. Um, maybe they were showing me that they were going to get Strider, take Strider to Minas Tirith um, next round. I, I don't know. Um, okay. Now, what would you discard here? This is, this is I did not know what to discard. I have Return of the Witch King, which is not a particularly, I don't love the card effect, but Swarm of Bats is one of the most powerful, um, is a really powerful card, a combat effect. So Swarm of Bats, Nazgul Search could easily stall them for this round. Um, so I'm definitely keeping Nazgul Search. Um, Horde from the East, incredibly good combat effect, Deadly Strife. Grand, Ulug High, which is a good reinforcement, and also a army die, which uh, an army card, which is important if they do happen to play um, Power Too Great, because I need an army die to be uh, army card to be able to get rid of it. Obviously, Ring is mine, Day Without Dawn. So what... What do you get rid of here? I think I got rid of. Why don't you pause for a moment? Leave a comment. What would you What would you get rid of here? Uh, discard. Just making a note about that. And um, I discard day without dawn. And it's tough because if they roll a bunch of like two wills of the west, um, I could stall them. So it is a little risky to discard that. Um, the odds of rolling two sixes on five dice, like relatively low, but not zero. So I'm, I really don't know. Um, the other thing I was considering, I think was, was, um, 
Return of the Witch King, Swarm of Bats. Like, obviously, I want to be able to cancel cards, but um, yeah. So because there was no chance that Aragorn would um, appear, I think that was another reason where I was like, okay, I can let go of Day Without Dawn. All right, I allocate one eye, I roll one more, and I only get a single Palantir. So this is the first time that I've rolled a Palantir since I had Palantir of Orthanc in play. Um, and my opponent gets three movement, which is which is great. That's exactly what they need because even with Nazgul Search, uh, they're going to be able to hide, move, move, or hide, move, hide, move, and be okay. So... Um, I know that they're going to be able to make it into Mordor no matter what. They're probably going to have to give me a ring, um, or they could—they might give me a ring if they get revealed into Daggerlad. Um, so, if I had more Palantirs or more character dice, I would have been tempted to play this turn differently. But with only a single Palantir and no rings, um, it's tricky to know exactly what to do. I, I'm, you know. Somewhat, to, I could play Ulug High here. Um, I obviously am happy to play the Ring is Mine sometime soon. Grand could be useful. Um, and obviously, I want to play Nazgul Search at some point this round. So really, this Palantir is sort of for Nazgul Search is what it's going to be because otherwise, this card is useless. So that's my thinking. They start by hiding, and then I muster some elites into Orthanc. And, um, you know, I'm very tempted to go towards Helm's Deep with this army um but the chances of them having ents at this point are quite you know pretty high um and they do have two ents so i'm not exactly sure what um what i should be doing here I, i'd be curious to know what would you do as shadow i think that muster sure makes sense um but then what else are you doing as shadow here um, I would love to, I would love to know, uh, this is 36 minutes in, um, actions. What do you do? So what I end up doing is, um, I attack Pilar gear because I see that my opponent will, um, the elves are not at war, so they can't play Cairdren's ships yet. And the only thing that helps Dol Amroth is Imrahil of Dol Amroth, which relatively low odds that they have that. Um, and then if, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I don't know exactly what else to, to do. Um, I'm thinking now seems like the right time to strike. So, uh, that's what I do. And then, and then I think I'm going to use, I think the plan is you will use Nazgul search at some point to relocate the witch King down to, um, Dol Amroth because I don't really have time to, um, I mean, I guess I could bring, the other option was bring armies into Woodland Realm first, attack there, and then, um, and then use Nazgul Search to relocate to Dol Amroth. Um, maybe that's the better play. Maybe better to take out, um, Woodland Realm now. I don't know. So, um, I attack Pilar gear, I get the hit and, um, now Gondor is at war and, uh, fellowship moves safe. Oh no, the fellowship gets hit, but they don't get revealed. So that's significant because they, um, now, um, my opponent won't have to use a ring unless I use, um, unless I use Nazgul search right here. So would you use Nazgul search? to relocate um, the Witch King to Pilar Gear and then go ahead and, and attack uh, Dol Amroth. Um, in that case, you know that they will need to use a ring to, they'll use the character to hide and then a ring to move. Um, and, and, this, and the thing about this action token, um, that action token means that if I reveal them in Dagor Lad, using Nazgul Search, then they can use the action token and have the last action this round and know that they will be completely safe from, from anything because I don't have any character dice 
Um, and I won't have any other character dice. So normally the risk is if you use your action token as free people to get the last action in the round that you're getting into Mordor, the risk is that um, Shadow will have something like Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane or Foul Thing from the Deep, and then they'll reveal you with a hunt tile. And um, and then you get stalled because you only have one action die left and instead you have to hide. It's, you know, not great odds, but there are chances for Shadow to stall you with Cruel Weather or, or something with Cruel Weather. Um, so the thing is, I don't have a second character die showing and therefore they know they'll be completely safe. They're going to give me a ring. They'll make it in. So, um, so that's why, for those reasons, I didn't play... Nazgul search um, here, but probably it was a mistake because my other option was like, I don't, I don't get a ring out of this. Um, and I was excited to get the extra tile. So what's going to happen is they're going to move again and I have some chance of hitting them, but relatively low chance of revealing them. Like I think 25% chance of revealing them, something like that. Um, so then I could get the tile from hitting them on the move and then another tile um, another tile from from being revealed into a stronghold. So maybe I'm being too greedy with the hunt here and it would be better to just get the ring and then I don't know what. But the other thing is if I reveal them at the end of the round, um, then they'll end up starting the turn revealed or they'll have to give me a ring to hide. So I think, I think all of that. Yeah. I don't know. This is, this is tricky. I would love, please leave some comments. What would you do in this situation? Do you play Nazgul search or not? As it turns out, I didn't. And I continue with my plan to move armies along and besiege Dol Amroth. My opponent musters once into Dol Amroth. I besiege it. And I think, okay, good. The only thing that'll save them is Imrahil of Dol Amroth. And then they move once. And they have to sort of wait and see if I have cruel weather. Um, no, they don't because I, never mind. I don't even have. Oh, right. No, they had to until I play this card. They had to wait and see. I play it now because I want to attack Dol Amroth and this reveals them. So I reveal them into um, the stronghold and I get my Nazgul in position so I can attack Dol Amroth effectively. And then I reveal them into the stronghold. And then I get the single eye. So that was a one out of eight chance. Very relatively unlikely. Uh, but that's how it goes. Oh, and I guess I missed them when, when they moved. Sorry, I should also clarify. When, when they moved into Mordor, that second move, I also missed them on that move. So this was a... this could have been a much more painful round for them getting into Mordor. Um, but they get in relatively easily, uh, an I and a two. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe that's about average. That's probably about average. Okay. So I hit them there and, um, I get to draw my first card from the Palantir of Orthanc. So that's nice. And, um, then my opponent plays Immerhill of Dol Amroth. So I think this is the argument for, um, for potentially playing Nazgul Search earlier. Because if they have Immerhill of Dol Amroth, they would not have been able to play this. They just needed, they would have needed four dice. So, um, you know, I think that is potentially a little bit of a mistake on my part. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on. So that was, that was really, I mean, they played that round beautifully. There was a hide, move, move, and then two musters into the place that I was attacking. Like, that's exactly what you want to do as three people. So that was really well played. Um, and, may, right, maybe I should have just come up here. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I attack into uh, Dol Amroth. I cycle a um, strategy card. And I end up rolling three sixes, which is very good for me. And they get one hit back. And then I go ahead and press and I get um, three more sixes. I don't kill any people to Relentless Assault because they played Advantageous Position. But I end up rolling three sixes again. So, you know, sometimes that happens when strongholds go your way. And, uh, and then I press and uh, I play Deadly Strife on this final action because um, they could potentially 
get carried in ships. I don't know. I just, I want to be relatively fast. And I know that I'm going to be drawing a card from Palantir anyway. Uh, no, sorry. I'm not going to be drawing a card from Palantir, but I'm going to have a bunch of cards in my hand um, at the start of next round. So I want to make sure I kill this guy. So I do. And that one goes away and I got to four victory points. I'm actually, yeah, I'm at four victory points right now. Okay. So, um, my opponent passes, I go ahead and get my armies in position. I move this unit from Gorgoroth into these three from Morgoth, Gorgoroth into minus Morgul, anticipating that I'm going to need to go sort of defend Pelargir. Um, these eight units should be able to retake Pelargir, even if the guys from Asgiliath go and muster up there should probably still be okay. Um, so, uh, that's that. And then we draw cards. I get Shelob's Lair, fighting uruk High, and they declare into Mordor. And when you look at this hunt pool, this is not that bad of a hunt pool uh, for the free people. And that's sort of the consequence of drawing all four eyes before you get to Mordor. Um, so, you know, they're go they have five corruption and they have five companions worth of corruption. So they're going in sort of even. And... Um, I don't know. It's it's not it's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. It's definitely possible uh, for them to be okay here. Um, so now I get three Palantirs, which I'm very excited about, and they get this horrible roll of no movement. So if they don't want to take an automatic corruption, they're going to have to spend a ring to hide, just to hide, and um, they're not going to be able to spend a ring or will of the West to get rid of Palantir of Orthanc. So I'm going to be drawing three cards here. That's really great for me. I'm obviously going to get the red tiles in. I think, I don't know, maybe, so I put the red tiles in, you'll, you'll see. So they, they, um, move, I think into, no, what do they do? They, they move into Osgiliath. That makes total sense. They recapture and then they, um, get the regular from Iron Hills into Erebor. So that's all good. Um, and then I just start playing my character cards. Now, I think it makes total sense to um, to play red tiles because why wouldn't you play red tiles? But if I think to myself, realistically, there's no way there's destroying the ring this turn. I mean, I mean, obviously they're not destroying the ring this turn. There's no way they're destroying it next round either. Like they're not going to, it's impossible for them, basically impossible with this hunt pool, um, with all these reveals to be able to destroy the ring on five dice. Um they would have to draw four, like all four of these tiles. So, so basically my thinking is now in retrospect on this analysis, maybe it's wrong to be using these Palantir dice to play, um, to play my, uh, fellowship hurting tiles. Like maybe the right play here is, um, just go military because how are they going to hold, how are they going to hold, um, enough victory points here? given that I could potentially attack um, Helm's Deep, like I could muster up um, in Orthanc. So anyway, um, I could have like moved moved the Witch King up here and attacked here, gone after Lorien. I, I have Shadows on the Misty Mountains, right? So I could play Shadows on the Misty Mountains, move armies a little bit more to reinforce Lorien, take out Lorien. Um yeah, so I think in retrospect, going a full military route here probably would have been the better path. Um, okay, instead, I play red tiles. It's hard to not play red tiles when the Fellowship is in Mordor. I don't know that that's definitely wrong of me. Um, I get breaking, I redraw a character card. So I'm like, I'm going heavy character is what is happening here. Um, I play breaking of the Fellowship. I get a zero. Um Maybe it's wrong, but like these all do one corruption. This does, this one does um, three corruption and this three does five corruption. So um, that's why I do it. I get a zero, which is fine. Basically anything other than an eye, other than an eye is fine. And even Shelob is okay because you get to roll for Shelob and that's how many they have to separate. So probably Shelob would do five corruption because um, I'd roll, probably roll a three or higher. And then they have to separate all three. So um, that's why I play it. I think it does a lot of corruption here. And um, and then I get Lord of the Ring. Now, Lord of the Ring does two thirds or what's five thirds. Lord of the Ring does five thirds corruption. Um, 
maybe I should play Lord of the Ring also. I decide to play, um, I decide to wait. What am I doing? I guess I'm waiting on that. And I get the, the, the Mouth of Sauron, and then I move armies to get ready to take Woodland Realm, and then they muster a couple times. And now I move the Witch King up to Woodland Realm. I think I was drawing, what was happening was I was drawing character cards because I had both Black Captain Commands and Ring Wraiths are abroad in the deck. And so I thought like there are a bunch of usable character cards that I could get. And um, yeah, so I end up, I end up doing this. It's, it's a little weird. Like, why aren't I just, it's hard to find the right balance. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you would just, so I play Grand here to take out Woodland Realm. Um, maybe I should just play Lord of the Ring. That does five thirds corruption. Like that's, that's pretty good. Um, it does make it a little faster to get Gollum. And so like this two would probably not be a reveal and this one might not be a reveal, but given this hunt pool, um, you're not gaining that much from Gollum other than the ability to reveal and hide yourself. But I think, I think there's going to be enough of a, a rush. Um, all right. So I ended up, I ended up spending two Palantirs there to mess with the fellowship. All right. And then I cycle lure of the ring because I want to play some combat card and I'm cycling into, I guess I'm trying to get more red tiles. Um, and I get some hits and I think in the end, oh, I drew, right. So I redrew Orc Patrol and then I play it as a combat card and maybe that's wrong. I was worried about hitting these eyes or Shelob on the tile drawing card. That's not, that's, that's not that good. Um, I don't know exactly how much average damage this is. Let's calculate really quick. Let's call, let's call Shelob a four corruption damage. Well, let's just do it right. Let's call it three and a half because that's the average amount of corruption that would inflict. Um, plus three, plus three, plus one is 10 and a half, plus one, plus two, plus one is 14 and a half. All right, so we'll call that 14 and a half, and then one, there's uh, 12 tiles here. So 14 and a half divided by 12 is the amount of corruption on average that this is going to inflict, um, which is a little bit off because these ones would almost certainly result in a random casualty being taken. Um, so these ones could potentially be twos instead. So, you know, it's a little more than one corruption. This card is a little more than one corruption. So I guess my thinking is if I didn't play Lore of the Ring, um, it really doesn't make sense to play Orc Patrol. But maybe the right thing is play Lore of the Ring and play Orc Patrol. <laughs> uh, so I can't quite make up my mind about, about what to do. So there are a good number of hits against um, this this uh army and uh they managed to survive pretty well uh and they end up with three regulars um in woodland realm after grand so obviously and i did play some combat cards and now they're mustering up polar gear so i think that combat went relatively well for them i then move all the way into uh the rest into woodland realm and then um let's see what do they do they muster the dwarves a little bit. And by the way, that's also why I did not take Iron Hills earlier, because even though I could have potentially done it, um, I don't want the war, the dwarves getting to war too easily. And that extra one um, regular, like, yeah, I want to kill it, but easily they, ha they could easily have scouts by now. Um, and I just don't want the dwarves getting to war too fast. So um, I eventually take out uh woodland realm yeah and so they do a couple more hits they ended up doing i guess four four damage to me in the process and um then they have to hide they spend a ring to hide which is uh quite sad they have a bunch of ents um they are ready to hold helms deep if i attack helms deep so um all right now i get to roll 10 dice to their five which is always nice and um, I get one eye and they roll only one more movement. So obviously that is not a good situation for them. I drew shadows moving and now finally I get to ring wraiths are abroad. So, you know, I, I think cycling those character cards does get me deeper into the character deck and does increase my chances of getting um, ring wraiths or, or, or um, black captain commands. So 
All right, and I have two Palantirs now. And again, they're going to have to use a ring to move, and they didn't roll a Will of the West. So my Palantir Vorthank on turn seven, six and seven, really is is paying off. It lasted a long time. Um, they move right away, which is certainly correct in case I drew a red tile. And um, I get a three. They get rid of Gimli and go up on Corruption, and that's obviously correct. So nice for them to not be revealed by the one or the two. or the There, there aren't very many in there that reveal them. And they dodge a red tile, which is good. So... I get the ring is mine in the pool, which is good. And I redraw another character card, which is this, um, which is this red tile. So, um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be trying to go for more red tiles and maybe I should just try and win the game because what, what I'm doing here is there's no way they're destroying the ring this turn. Are they going to destroy the ring next turn? Probably not. Um, so maybe just go for my victory points here instead of instead of playing more cards i could be playing um ring wraiths or abroad i could potentially get into i could play willock high potentially get into a situation of um fighting urk high depending on where um i bring these armies and how much i muster up so um you know i don't know that it was right to play these red tiles even though it's so tempting to play them and usually almost always it's the right thing maybe it's still the right thing curious to know would you have still played two red tiles right here um, with your two Palantirs, like it's so juicy to get to play them, but, um, maybe you do other things. So in the end, um, I do go ahead and, uh, play the two red tiles. They muster more in Pilargar and Minas Tirith. And then I think for a while and I'm realizing, you know, I don't have enough to defeat Erebor. Like I need to leave at least one unit behind in Woodland Realm in case they like retreat out of Erebor into, um, into Withered Heath and then retake Woodland Realm. So I have to leave one unit there, I think. Um, and I'm going to have to use one, leave one unit to take Iron Hills at some point. So like seven or eight hit points is not really enough to take out Erebor. So um, I think that's, uh, I think that I have to use these musters to actually muster. Maybe that's wrong, but uh, that's what I do. So I think for a bit and then I realize, yeah, I'm going to need more units. So I muster into North Rune twice, and then I get my armies into position, and then I see that I have um, Shadow is moving. So, you know, this is a situation where instead of playing those red tiles, I could have just been two attacks further into this um, process. Um, so this is going to be, I think, a pretty cool, effective use of Shadow is moving, um, which it's hard to actually use this as a... Um, card effect and i i obviously like the the combat effect too but this is a situation where i'm happy to just shuffle a bunch of these armies around and have the biggest possible army uh in dale so i move one unit to take iron hills i move my two elites into dale i move the rest of the army from woodland realm back into dale and then i use this one regular to hold woodland realm in case there's some shenanigans about like retreating out of erebor um into withered heath to take woodland realm so um i think that's i think that's pretty good and now dwarves are one away from war, and that'll be fine for me. So they draw a character card, which makes total sense. And um, you know, it's interesting if they had if they had done things slightly differently timing wise. I'm seeing they actually had wisdom of Elrond. Um, yeah, I don't know that they had enough musters to be able to get the dwarves to war, but um, yeah. Okay, so I go ahead and attack Erebor here. I can bring everyone because all of these muster points are taken care of. And um, now I think even if they have Dane Ironfoot's guard, I still have good chances of winning this battle. They use a ring to move again, which makes total sense. And I get an eye, which is three in a reveal. So obviously I would have preferred a red tile. I've had red tiles in there from early on, but an eye is an eye is still good. So now we get down to Gollum. And now you look at this, they have three more steps and um, six corruption plus, you know, four character cards. There's Bilbo's Song, there's there's Another Way, there's Athelos, there's Mithril Coat and Sting, which would be really scary for me um, because I've invested all this time to get these red tiles in the pool. Um, so if they hit a red tile next round, it's unlikely they'll be able to destroy the ring. Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I could have... If I had instead... So I spent like four or so actions on... Um, on drawing, on playing red tiles, breaking of the fellowship, and I drew a bunch of character cards. 
Um, and my four, like I might be four actions short. If I had four more actions right now that were like combat related actions, could I take out Lorien? Could I take out Pilar gear, um, and Erebor and have won this round? I don't know. Um, so in any case, I attack and I use, I use the black captain commands because I want to cycle deeper into the character deck to get to, um, another red tile. And, um, I want to, um, get two more Nazgul in play so that when I move to Lorien in the future with ring Wraiths or abroad, I can also bring two more Nazgul into Asgiliath and that will increase my chances of being able to take Pilar gear. Um, so, or maybe these armies are going to move up to Edoras depending on what I roll next round. So, um, I go ahead and play Black Captain Commands and I use a ring to turn it into a Palantir. So I get an extra card draw because, um, I, I think it's likely, very likely that the game is going to end next round and I already have an extra ring to use next round anyway. So that's why I do it. And there's also um, Balrog of Moria is still in the deck. So I know there's some chance when I come attack Lorien that I'll be able to um, potentially play the Balrog of Moria. And I'm worried about showing up there and then Power Too Great happens or Gandalf goes in there and cancels my leadership. But that's why I still have Ring Wraiths are abroad. So um, my plan is to try and take it out in a single attack. Um, which is a little like relatively unlikely with these combat cards, but if I draw into Balrog, maybe more likely. So in any case, I play Black Captain Commands and um, they play Confusion. I think in the end, the dwarves end up, uh, I don't know exactly how good of a combat it is for me, but in the end, um, I play I play the Fighting Urkai as Onslaught, but end up not needing it. And um, that's that combat. So I think that was about right, given how many uh, hit points I had. So right now I'm plus one on sixes and minus one on five. So pretty average, uh, combat for me. And they are, um, plus four on fives and plus zero on sixes. So they, they've been dishing back a little, little extra damage. All right. And then I get to draw two character cards. One of which is Balrog of Moria, which is nice. I'm um, sorry. One, just one card I had already redrawn earlier. Um, what did I end up redrawing? Uh, sorry, I missed that. When I played so I played Nazgul Strike and then Morgul Wound. Yeah, so I, right, I had Morgul Wound and I ended up not playing it against the Fellowship because I thought that one corruption is not going to make a difference given, given what's happening. Like either they're going to have enough to destroy the ring, in which case probably like they're just going to need to avoid eye tiles. Um, and red tiles, and then if they they could potentially destroy the ring that way, and otherwise, um, that one corruption probably won't matter. So, I just I, that's why I cycled it. And then once I redrew into Nazgul Strike, I thought ah, Nazgul Strike is not useful. Maybe I'll take out that one leader, save me a few hit points. It's, it's probably a waste to play Nazgul Strike. Um, probably didn't matter. Okay, so I draw Dreadful Spells and Pits of Mordor. I'm happy to see Desperate Battle, and. Um, and then they draw into Faramir's Rangers and Axe and Bow. Okay. Um, I allocate one eye and get two attacks. So that is way under what we would expect for um, rolling nine dice. You'd expect four and a half attacks. And this is why maybe I should have just used that character die last round. Um, because then I would have had an extra attack this round with um, the Black Captain Commands. So I thought to myself, you know, I have a ring, I have a, um, I have the, the mouth of Sauron, um, I'm going to roll enough attacks. It's going to be fine. So that was a mistake. I think last round, like the, ha getting two extra Nazgul and getting to draw one extra card, like, yeah, that's some value, but having an extra attack in my hand for this round, in case I get a bad roll like this, um, you know, it just protects me a little bit more um, from getting a bad roll. So now I'm really going to be kind of squeezed being able to take care of things. Um, I would have loved to be able to threaten to just walk into Edoras and not have to fight Pelargir. Now I have to fight Pelargir um, and I have to make sure I take Lorien. And um, we'll see. Hopefully for me, the Fellowship won't roll enough 
um, character movement to be able to destroy the ring. I think they need a one to hide, two, three, four, right? They need four movement at minimum and probably five if they get revealed. Um, so they need to, realistically, they need to roll like four movement on five dice. Um, so, and they do. So, you know, I, this is totally fair. They had, I mean, what's fair, but they, they, it's not, I'm happy kind of that, that this happened because otherwise they would have just rolled such low movement in Mordor. I'm glad that they, that they at least have an option. So, um, they go ahead and hide and they know that even if they run into, even if they run into one stop or one reveal, they're still going to have enough to be able to keep moving and destroy the ring this round with their final ring. And so again, like if they had had one fewer ring, this round would have been different. Um, if they, um, if I had done a little more corruption and they run into a red tile, like a lot more things would not have been viable. So I don't know what would, what would this turn have looked like if they didn't even have, if there were no red tiles in here and instead like if, well, obviously, if I had one last round, if I had four more dice and I won last round with four dice, um, four extra dice, like that, the game would be over. Um, if instead I had these extra red tiles in, like that, that seems worth it. I'm uh, all right. In any case, I, I correct my, my victory point total and then I, they, they hid and then I start by playing Ring Rancer Abroad and go for Lorien, obviously, because I'm very excited to be able to now play Balrog of Moria and I have a good chance of being able to take out Lorien. So instead, um, they play Shield Wall. Um, I get zero hits with Balrog and zero hits with my 10 dice. So obviously that is not good and they get two hits against me. And now all of a sudden, I have seven hit points to their five hit points and a companion. And like, that's not going to be enough. And even like with Ulug High, it's probably not going to be enough. Um, I have these musters, so, um, you know, I'm probably going to use them. So I redraw into Isildur's Bane because of the um, Balrog. And then I redraw again a character card uh, from the Palantir. So the Palantir is definitely doing a lot of work for me this game, and they don't have time to get rid of it. They absolutely did not, could not use that Will of the West to get rid of it because otherwise a single reveal would, would stop them this game, this, uh, this round. Um, so ring rates are broader done and then they move again. And that's, that's totally right because they need to know, are they going to, um, be able to destroy the ring or not? If they get, for instance, if they get the eye or if they get um, the red eye, really, is the only thing that will tell them for sure they can't destroy it. Um, but otherwise, otherwise, they can keep making progress. So they move for the first time and they get this one. Very pleasant. Um, that's great, right? They need to not be revealed twice. If they're revealed twice or they hit the or between an eye and a stop or reveal, they can if they can have one of those, but not two. Um, so I, um, I go ahead and play, give it to us here because one extra red tile that also stops and reveals them is very good. That will end their chances of getting, um, a ring victory this round. Um, cause they wouldn't be able to do it with, with those dice. And, uh, and then I get new powers rising. I draw a strategy card here because I don't know of any, um, character cards that would be relevant at this point because um like there's i just don't know there's like worm tongue or uh, i guess let's let's see what they are out of curiosity so there's cruel weather candles of corpses which could maybe do one but um and then littlest eye yeah and then worm tongue yep so um i felt like at this point shadow uh strategy cards are going to be more useful to me and i'm happy to see great host that can help finish off a stronghold. And um, I needed to play Give It To Us because if if they, I needed to play that right away um, because I want them to hit it if they can. All right, so then they move again. Obviously, that's the right thing to do. They just have to keep going before I can mess with them more. And, um, and then they get another one. So obviously, that was really great for them. They just, in two dice, managed to dodge like quite a few tiles that would have been very bad for them. And now... This is beautiful, right? Now they're they're one away. Um, they're one away from destroying the ring, one step away. And even if 
even if they hit a red tile right now, they could, um, like the red three or the she or she lob would cause them to not um, lose. Potentially, they could just move and win. Another idea is they could play. Um, they could play Bilbo's song if they're really worried. But I, probably what I would do is just move and then hopefully not hit the red tile. So um, at this point, I see that all of these eyes, these three eyes are safe for them. If I draw one of these eyes on this last move, they don't lose because I only have three eyes in here. And this ring I have to use for my attacks. I can't, like I have three attacks, but three attacks won't be enough because what I really need to do is muster and Moria, move twice to reinforce Lorien, and then um, move to... Um, like get ready in West Herondor and then one attack to one more. So two movements, one attack into Lorien, one attack into Pilargear. So again, if I had, remember way back when I had Miss Shadows on Misty Mountain, like I could have played Shadows on Misty Mountain. I could have taken Lorien. Like there were definitely chances for me to, to take Lorien had I prioritized that. Um, okay. In any case, at this point, I can't, as far as I can tell, I can't use that ring to, turn one of my dice into an eye or else I won't be able to reinforce Lorien other than with um, other than with Ulog High and I'm worried that won't be enough um, so therefore I play Isildur's Bane and and my thinking there is if I get a um, one this this one or this two or this three um, or, uh, obviously this three or this one, then I could add a little corruption and help. Um, if I get Shelob, I could potentially just win the game right away. Uh, and obviously this eye would be worse. This eye would be bad. And these, these eyes would be bad, but, um, any of these gray tiles or this red tile, red tile, red tile would be okay. Um, because otherwise, and, and maybe this is a moment where if I had done more corruption earlier, like if I was going the corruption strategy, I could have done more corruption and then I would be in this situation where I wouldn't need to deal with, I wouldn't need to add more corruption to the fellowship, but I'm in a situation where I need to add more corruption to the fellowship. So I'm playing Isildur's Bane. Be curious to know what you would have done there. Um, would you have, so, so the two options I was considering was one, playing Isildur's and hoping to get a good tile or two, um, using an eye, uh, sorry, using a ring to turn one of these musters into an eye, which would then also turn on all of the, all of these eyes would now become wins for me. Um, and then play, um, and then play, um, Ulog High into Lorien and hope to take Lorien with nine hit points against um, five in a single round of combat. And it just felt like the odds of that were low. And on top of that, if they have, if he has, um, there's another way um, or a healing, some, something that heals, then um, a single eye wouldn't be, wouldn't be enough to get, uh, to get the job done. So that's why in the end I decided to go for Isildur's Bane because I felt like, um, you know, the, the upsides were bigger, uh, like this two or this three would then even with there is another way would still wouldn't be enough. Basically, these would still be winning tiles for me. And whenever you have a chance to win the game instantly, like, yeah, it's low odds to draw Shelob and then roll four or higher, um, but could be pretty epic if it happens. Anyway, so I play Isildur's. Um, and I get the one reveal and, um, you know, obviously this is much better than, uh, an eye. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think that the three other two would have been better tiles or even the three stop might've been better than this. I don't know. Um, yeah. So in any case, now the free people realize that they're not going to have time to play Bilbo's song they will have to hide and then use a ring to move. And so um, 
one more corruption was dealt by that and they get revealed. Um, obviously it would have been nicer for me if they, if I drew that when they were moving up Mordor, because then I would have known for sure they couldn't, they couldn't destroy the ring this round, but, um, that's how it goes. So, um, I go ahead and muster into Moria and then I execute my plan to move, um, armies and reinforce Lorien. I, uh, fill up, um, West Herondor and now, um, they hide with the fellowship and then um obviously to get my final three victory points i need to take out lorian and i need to take out pilar gear chances are i'm going to be able to win on both of these um but um the free people is going to be able to react to that and then move with the fellowship so if they see that for instance i don't take pilar gear or I don't take Lorian, then they don't have to move. They don't have to give me a ring. They don't have to move. I'm not winning this round. So I want to do the battle that is safer. And I I think that while this doesn't have any leadership, um, I think that 11 hit points against um, five is probably safer, uh, given that I have these combat cards. And I'm going to get to, this way I will also get to cycle one extra combat card from um, the Witch King. So uh, I go ahead and I... I uh, berate myself for uh, being too slow that I didn't have I couldn't use this ring to make an eye um, and and then I play Ulug High I had been holding this for so long thinking that I was going to be able to reinforce some combat somewhere uh, but I never played it I was saving it in case of um, Power Too Great for a while and um, now I play it finally for its combat effect and um it was nice this whole round. I wasn't too worried about power too great in terms of my final calculations because um, the free people didn't have any strategy cards in their hand. They drew one off the top of the deck at the start of the round, and then they used it um, for a combat effect in the first combat this this round in Lorien. So um, that was nice in terms of my planning. I could be sure that uh, I would be okay. So um, I go ahead and come into Lorien, and I roll um, four sixes, so obviously that's good. And then they get um, three hits against me, but it's not enough because I have um, I have great host. So Lorien has fallen, and now they see. Well, I could potentially not move, and then Shadow is likely to win this battle. I think in Pilar Gear, um, or I could um, I could move. Right. And so on five tiles, uh, the fellowship destroys the ring and on six tiles, they don't. And I'm curious what you would do. Um, the, so free could have used this muster and mustered another elite into Pilar gear. Um, they don't have any combat cards that are useful. It would be nine hit points against 10 hit points with five leadership. Um, I don't know what your chances are um, to survive that. It seems like relatively low, probably worse than 50-50. Um, so better to take the gamble on the hunt pool. And um, these these uh, tiles, these five tiles are fine because Gollum can reveal on this three and um, be safe. So um, they end up... Uh, th- Oh, right. Another important thing to note is if they had there is another way, then all three of these eye tiles suddenly become safe for them because they would heal one and they would only take three corruptions. So um, they had a little less than 50% chance of having there is another way by now and they didn't have it. So, um, you know, I think the luck in Mordor certainly on turns one and two were were, um, pretty bad for them with their action dice and then action dice this round were good. I, I don't know. I feel like overall I got luckier than they did, um, but it was pretty close. So comes down to the final um, tile. You know, I think, does anybody even want to see it? Like really what you should know is it was a very close game. It turned out to be a really close game. Um, but in the end, uh, an eye tile is drawn. So that is exactly 12 corruption. Uh, the ring has not been destroyed and, uh, the ring bearers are, um, corrupted. So that was the game. Uh, it was, it was 
quite fun for me. And uh, my opponent also is a very fast player. So I'm, I apologize if they see this, I apologize to them for the slightly slow game. Um, but it was, it was a fun one. Let's look at statistics so you can see. Um, I was pretty average on combat rolls, uh, plus one on sixes, minus three on, uh, fives. And, uh, they were, Plus, certainly they inflicted a little extra damage. And in the end, uh, action dice were relatively balanced. I guess they ended up a little bit high on character dice, but low on Will of the West. The fact that they didn't roll more Wills of the West certainly hurt them with um, with the Palantir of Orthanc. I got to draw a lot of cards from that. And um, that, was, that certainly helped me. And obviously, get, being minus three on eyes is generally a good thing. So I would say my action dice rolls uh, were good. So yeah, plus four on on army musters gives me a lot of flexibility. So overall, overall positive action dice for me. Um, and that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good rest of the day.